Hello, my name is Larry Bowler. Today we're going to be talking about hatches. Hatches are typically used for removing material from inside a figure, either in the auto toolpath, laser, or engrave modes. In the engrave and laser modes, we use it primarily on fonts where a large tool uh, would be too large to get into some of the tiny corners such as seen in this Times New Roman font uh, that is 0.375 inches high. The information that we get from Windows is the outline of these fonts uh, which is illustrated by exploding the end number uh, and you will see that we've got just a series of polylines uh, that are on the outline of the font. Now Windows will uh, fill those in with pixels. We either have a tool that we have to generate a toolpath or with the laser using the hatch mode we can generate a series of horizontal lines, turn off the laser in between and just turn on the laser where it needs to cut. The problem with generating a toolpath particularly in fonts which have alternating wide and, and small sections means that the tool may be too wide for the small sections and too narrow to completely cut out the interior of the of the font. In fact, uh, looking at the screen, you'll see that trying to offset the uh, N uh, generates an error where it can't get into the tiny corners and that will generate a toolpath error which will make the uh, N number or the font uh, display and cut incorrectly in AvCam. The display shown here in AvCam is a simulation of the end number in the engrave mode using a tool or cutter of uh, 20, 30 thousandths of an inch. Now normally uh, we're going to use a cutter that is 10% of the letter height which would indicate a desired cutter of about 0 0.037 inches. Well, here's a 30 thousandths and it already generated all kinds of toolpath errors making it cut incorrectly. As an alternative, we can put the end number on a layer called online, which causes the uh, no toolpath to be generated and we cut right down the center line of the outline of the letter. This makes a pleasing looking uh, end number. However, this does not work well for switch legends and those types of markings. Particularly while using the laser, we can use a layer called hatch. So we just change the layer name from engrave to hatch. That uh, changes everything on that layer to the hatch layer. What the hatch layer does is it will draw a series of horizontal lines starting from the bottom and moving on the way up. So we'll save that. We are now in AvCam and we're going to select the hatch layer that we set up earlier and we're also going to set up the laser mode. We will also want to uh, set our spot size at about 0 0.004. This reflects the more compact spot size of the LZ2 laser, which has a, a smaller spot size than the LZ1. When we're through with our settings, we just click simulate and we will see that a series of lines are drawn from the bottom to the top. Now, we have previously had a hatch routine, but it worked totally different. This one, instead of speeding up and slowing down, speeding up and slowing down, the uh, laser travels at a constant approximately 100, 100 inches per minute and just simply turns the laser on and off. Uh, providing very precise edges. You may notice uh, when you zoom in that the edges look ragged, but those are two thousandths of an inch diameter spots that you're seeing when 
viewed at uh, normal size, it is very nice, crisp engraving. The first thing that we're going to do is to focus the laser. To do that, we hit the A key for alignment. And then we move the Z axis up and down to get the best spot size. When it's the very finest spot size you can get, hit Z once, twice, and hit enter, and hit escape. Now our Z0 is set. And now we're going to prepare the surface for cutting. To prepare the surface, we're going to put a little bit of water on, mixed with a few drops of soap in order to cut the surface tension. The thickness is not critical. It's pretty well self-leveling and uh, just get it spread around all over so the whole surface is wetted and uh, ready to go. So just uh, drop a few drops of basically any kind of hand soap in there, probably not one that's got oils or um, lotions, something like that in, but uh, just a general cleaner type of soap and spread it around and uh, we're ready to go. When you've got your file all set, your settings set, you're simulated, you're aligned, you're now ready to cut. Simply hit C for cut, and away we go. Cutting the hatches is slower than engraving, but it is considerably faster than our previous method of cutting hatches. It's very efficient. We recommend it for any laser engraving now. Uh, for small text, for big text, for graphics, just about anything. When you're done cutting, the result will look something like this. It's going to be a little bit grayish looking. There's ash inside the text. So just uh, uh, pour on just a little bit of 70% isopropyl alcohol and uh, rub it with a uh, or a shop towel and it'll clean right up for you. The new hatch procedure can be used on more than just text. It can be used on polylines. Take for instance the 8 in the end number that we just did and explode it. Now we have three polylines that form the outside of the eight and we have two inside polylines that uh, create the inside of the eight. If we put all of those on the hatch layer and uh, sim save it and simulate it, the hatch routine will cut through everything and not cut out the inside. So what do we do? Well, Another layer to the rescue. We'll put those on a layer called Island. Now islands are unique. They have to be totally enclosed by the hatch that they are associated with. In this case, the outside of the eight. There can be more than one. Uh, they cannot be overlapping. They must be totally enclosed by the outside named island. Once we do that, we save them. Now it will cut out just the part of the eight as we expect it to. So far, we've been dealing just with text and focusing on the laser. Remember, the engraver can do the hatches. However, it's really not practical due to all of the up and down Z motion required. So, 
with laser you want to do almost exclusively hatch and with the engraver uh, use the appropriate font very likely a legend font on the online layer and those will give you the most satisfactory results however we can do a lot more with the hatch in the auto toolpath mode let's talk about using hatches and islands with the auto toolpath mode with the auto toolpath mode we're going to be using a tool that is typically larger than the laser or the engraver and we're going to be removing a certain amount of material within the outlines of the hatch the layer hatch has to have a cut depth in this case is 0060 so the layer name is spelled ATCH0060 and those four numeric characters indicate the number of thousands below the surface the hatch will be cut same thing with the island the island has is named ISLAND0060 and uh, so that will cut around the island at 60 thousandths deep. If you're only going to cut the hatch it is permissible to use just lines and arcs uh, and if you're going to have an island both the island and the hatch have to be a polylines. QCAD makes this very easy. For instance, this island is comprised of four lines. We just select the four lines, go to Polyline Tools, and select Polyline from Selection. Now the entire uh, four lines are one polyline. Same thing with our hatch layer. Just select everything that you want to be in the hatch and go to polyline tools and do um, polyline from selection and now we've got a polyline let's save this as drawing number one we will go to avcam load it load number one go to layer management select hatch and island 0060 we should already be in the toolpath mode now if we don't have islands or polylines you will get an error I'll show you that in a minute but in settings uh, you'll do your normal or uh, cutting type settings the end mill diameter feed rates uh, so on and so forth so we'll slow it down here so we can see what happens and let's simulate and so it makes a series of horizontal lines followed by a tool path that traces the inside of the hatch and the outside of the island at the cut depth that we specified. So let's see once what happens if we have just lines instead of a polyline. We'll explode this. So now we have individual lines. We'll save that. Now the hatch is still a polyline, but the island is individual lines. Go back to AvCam, reload, and we get an error message. Only polylines, circles, and text in uh, hatches or islands. I have exploded both the uh, island and the hatch, so they are individual lines now. So let's see once what AvCam thinks about that. Save it. Go back to AvCam, load it. Only polyline circles or text are allowed in hatches or islands. So it's, it's just not going to work. We can cut the hatch, but not the island. So all we got to do is uh, go back uh, to QCAD or whatever CAD you're using. Go ahead and uh, make uh, polylines out of those entities. So now we've got the hatch is a polyline as well as the island. Now this can be, we can have multiple islands in here as well. Let's just go back here and add a circle in our islands. Obviously there has to be enough room for the tool to get around it. But let's see once what happens with this. Let's save that. 
So let's simulate and we've got islands and hatches. And that ought to do it for Auto Toolpath. Thanks. Bye.